Mark of the Phoenix is one of the most legendary pirates in the history of One Piece. As the right hand man of the world's strongest, Marco has rivaled some of the toughest characters in the series. But does he really have the strength to match characters like the admirals or even his fellow first commanders? Well, in this video, let's figure out how strong the guy really is. So let's firstly go to where Marco shines, the Battle of Marineford. I'm gonna immediately give Marco and every other Whitebeard Commander credit as they fought a war against these guys when they only really had one Yonko level character on their side. In my opinion, it's an insane testament to Marco's capabilities as a fighter that Whitebeard actually entrusted him as his right hand in such a dangerous battle. Next, whether you think the guy was serious or not, we immediately see Marco shine against someone as strong as Kizaru. Marco legit flies to the Yasukani on Magatama and takes no damage, going as far as to taunt the Admiral. I'd like to remind you guys of how scary this ability was when used against Law and his crew. It's a barrage of laser beams that go through anything like butter, and Margo tanked it in his Phoenix form easily. He then somewhat matched Kizaru, and while it's not clear how close the two are in speed, I think it's fair to say Marco could most likely keep up with the guy. Okay, starting with the first sort of controversial thing in this video, Marco clashing with Kizaru sent the Admiral flying across Marineford. Many argue that Marco has insanely low DPS, as he's never done anything significant to anyone around the commander or higher level. I'd like to argue that this is actually a pretty decent feat of strength. Essentially, and I know this sounds weird, but I think of this like an arm wrestling match. For Marco to have been able to overpower Kizaru that at least was trying a little bit, and then send him flying across a city, I think it shows the guy has at least a decent bit of strength. Besides kicking Aokiji before the Admiral could even react, there's one last thing I'd like to mention from Marine. Ford, and that's Marco's clash with the Kainu. The anime portrays this as Marco getting pretty easily overpowered once the Kainu uses extra force, but actually in the manga, we just see them clash evenly and then it immediately goes to Whitebeard versus a Kainu. It's not a huge deal, but it's still a crazy testament to how durable Marco really is. All in all, I don't think the Whitebeard pirates would have gotten even close to saving Ace if it wasn't for the capabilities of Marco, someone who back to back fended off against all three admirals and served as the main protector for a version of Luffy who, let's be real, truly had no real place in a war like this. Before I start talking about the battle in Onigashima, there are a couple facts I wanted to mention about the commander post Marine Ford. After Whitebeard's death, Marco immediately assumed leadership of the Whitebeard pirates, showing at the very least he was the most respected commander, and let's be real, you could probably make the argument that he was the strongest one as well. The Gorosei referred to Marco by name when they stated that him and the Whitebeard pirates were one of the only groups left that could actually challenge the Blackbeard pirates. It's not a huge anti-feat to lose to a Yonko level character, especially one that negates Devil Fruit powers. The last thing I want to mention before we start talking about Wano was that post Payback War, Marco was clearly not living the same life he did while on the Whitebeard Pirates. He stays on Sphinx Island to protect Whitebeard's homeland and acts as a doctor. That's pretty much it. I'd be willing to argue that at least for the year after the Payback War, the guy wasn't training close to the same level as he was when on the Whitebeard Pirates. So just be aware that after this point, I tend to think that Marco was probably past his prime. Now let's talk about Wano, where I'd like to argue that Marco was again an invaluable asset. One of the first skirmishes Marco finds himself in was funnily enough with a Yonko, Big Mom. Once again, we see someone of insane strength have some level of respect for someone like Marco, as Big Mom was surprised to find someone of his caliber working with a bunch of kids. Now these kids are a part of the same group that defeated characters like Cracker and Katakuri, two of her top fighters, and still, she held greater respect for Marco. Now this fight is admittedly really strange. Marco goes from clashing and overpowering Big Mom's Prometheus to getting immediately caught up in a chokehold. The most charitable argument I can give this is that Marco was caught off guard, and I do think this is likely what happened. Something similar happened when Vice Admiral Onigumo was able to lock sea stun cuffs on him while catching him off guard. Both these situations are probably anti feats for Marco's observation hockey, but at the same time, it kind of sucks. Because when we look at other situations, Marco seems to be pretty damn good at reacting to attacks. So he's in a chokehold, and instead of just one shotting the guy, Big Mom or there's Pero Sparrow to shoot an arrow at Marco to defeat him. But before this happens, Karen and Wanda end up defeating Pero Sparrow. Big Mom then lets go of Marco and runs away, claiming she didn't have the sole weapons to spare on him. But if Marco was gonna die to Pero Sparrow's arrow, wouldn't squeezing with advanced conquerors have had the same effect? But, but I don't I don't know. <laughs> so this is what I'd like to call bad power scaling. As this entire scene just doesn't make sense. The only argument I can think of is that Marco could have just stalled Big Mom for way too much time, but this doesn't really explain why she thought Perospero would at all be a threat. This especially doesn't make sense as Chopper tanked multiple arrows from 
her at the same time. So what I'm saying is, this scene really sucks and doesn't really make any sense. And I think the most you can gather from it is that one, Marco's flames can overpower Big Mom's Prometheus. Two, if caught off guard, Big Mom can catch Marco in a chokehold. And three, Marco is capable of stalling Big Mom for a decent amount of time and forcing her to use a significant amount of soul weapons. Now, before the king and queen fight, I just want to mention these two things that are just insane. First, this panel where Marco's getting stabbed in the head Anel style and just shrugging it off while he doesn't even have a Logia Devil Fruit. And secondly, more importantly, the fact that Marco had healed the entire banquet hall from Queen's Ice Oni virus. Like it or not, I don't think Marco was going into this fight with 100% stamina. Looking at the actual fight with king and queen, Marco shows to be decently impressive, clearly outspeeding the two on multiple occasions. And like I mentioned prior, was capable of reacting pretty decently to their attacks. At one point, he even had both characters, while transformed, in a chokehold. So if you think Marco getting put into a chokehold by Big Mom is an anti-feat, well... Now I know what you're thinking. While Marco did show decent feats of speed and reaction time, he eventually did succumb to exhaustion and found himself barely having injured King and Queen. There are a lot of things I want to argue here, but for starters, he did make Queen cough up blood, and while it's not the most amazing feat in the world, some people argue he did literally no damage to both of them. Looking at King, man, that's just unfair. In his flame on form, King was casually tanking attacks from Edma Zoro, the same guy who scarred Kaido. So the fact that Marco, someone who need I remind you was fighting queen at the same time wasn't able to deal damage to king is in my opinion not the hugest anti-feat and I know what you're saying but green bull yeah but the king and queen that fought green bull had severely lost to both Zoro and Sanji and at the same time I'd be willing to bet that the two didn't get similar medical attention to the straw hats for example even if we want to flip it and imagine if king was fighting like Marco and Jozu for example I really don't see the calamity dealing decent damage to either commander before going down maybe that's a hot take, but that's just my opinion. Now I could go to even further detail and talk about how the marines didn't show up at Sphinx Island until Marco actually left for Wano, or the fact that the dude pretty casually tanked a bolo breath, but I think everything I've said prior has pretty much helped me gather my point across. Now how would I scale Marco against admirals as well as his fellow first commanders? I'll say this immediately, unless we see him actually take out Green Bull, I don't see him beating an admiral more than 2 or 3 times out of 10. If we do take into account that Marco was most likely weaker during Wano than he was in marine, forward, current Marco is most likely a solid Yonko first commander level character. I'd rank him at a similar level to characters like King and Katakuri, if not a little bit higher, but I still think all three of these characters are taking each other to an extreme diff. Now if we're talking about a prime marine forward Marco, I would rank him in an area that many people refer to as Yonko commander plus, which really I just call low admiral level. This is somewhere where he wouldn't necessarily beat admirals, but he would at least give lower tier admirals a high to extreme diff fight. Now other characters I would rank at similar levels would be Zoro, Yamato, Kid Law, Sabo, and Shiryu. Maybe Sanji and like Lucky Ru and Yasop if you want, but it's really hard to say. This was a hefty video to make, so if you enjoyed it, I really do urge you to hit that subscribe button. It would be much appreciated. Check this video out over here where I talk about how Mark of the Phoenix fares against another blonde haired fire user in Sabo, and I will see y'all later.